and welcome to New Junction. Right now, to continue the progress on the station side of the layout, um, I wanted to try and replicate what I'd seen at Newcastle Central, which is a station pilot siding, in effect. So this is a, a space for an engine to sort of idle, uh, just in case anything goes wrong in the station or if a train fails and needs pulling out of the way. So traditionally you'll see a 67, a 37 or 66, that kind of that kind of engine sort of just sat there um, just in case it's called upon. So this is what I was going to aim to fill this back area with. Um, I think I'm leaning towards two uh, sidings, um, literally, <laughs> so I can have two engines in the space. Um, so first things first, I've got to do something quite uh, daunting to someone who's in, a, in effect completed the track work. I've got to cut into the main line and actually put this point in. This will probably ruin a bit of the ballast, um, however it'll be well worth it when it's all added in. It'll give the layout a bit more functionality um, and hopefully a bit more uh, usability, different aspects and things. So uh, I've dug out my trusty Dremel and I'm now going to mark off in the track where I want to cut into it and we'll see how it goes. So as you can imagine, I've been putting this off for a while because I didn't really want to have to cut into my uh, main line. So I'm going to attempt to do this uh, relatively and safely quickly uh, just so I can get it out of the way with and stop worrying about it and just get on with it. <laughs> the first step is I've lined up, I've already done it, where the point's going to go and then I've just scored out the uh, the edges with a, uh, a blade. This is literally just to scratch the surface, just to mark out which bit of track's coming out. I'm going to cut uh, these two rails first and then uh, re-measure it up just to make sure it's alright. Obviously I have to take into account the time of year. Now when you lay track you always leave a gap. Um, being winter the uh, track won't be at its full expansion or the rails won't be I should say. So the gap normally is larger than it will be in the summer. So if you're doing this in the summer um, you want a very uh, close gap, whereas in winter you have to allow for the expansion in the summer when the hotter weather comes in. So it's time to plug the Dremel in and we'll see how we get on. Now before using anything like this, because you're cutting into metal, it's very important that you wear safety goggles or glasses um, because any shards of metal and things can flick up. It's so just a, a quick safety tip to do it. So I've got mine on, you'll have to trust me. I won't be showing you because it's quite rather embarrassing, but uh, let's get on with the cutting. So as you can see, that's gone straight through. Now once the piece of track uh, has come out in the middle, uh, the edges will need a, a light filing, and then uh, we'll add the fish plates on top of that. And hopefully, touch wood, it should be quite a smooth process. So now to double check the measurement on the other side, and then we'll cut the piece of track out. So now that's both sides cut out, so using a small flathead screwdriver I'm now going to prise out the piece of track trying to keep intact as much of the ballast as possible. Don't worry of course, if anything comes up we'll just relay it, no problem at all. And there we go, the point is now in place. Now the next phase, remove the point again. As you've just seen, I've also removed the ballast um, from the sides just to allow the new uh, line to come off without any interruption. The next phase is to lightly uh, file down the ends of the tracks 
just here and here and then I'll get the points added uh, the fish plate sorry I should say and uh, I'll get this point tested before I go any further here goes right so the point is in place I did forget to mention you do have to take the we may have to take the first sleeper out um, from the pieces of track remaining just so you can get the uh, new fish plates in so this is the fun bit as you can tell I'm quite excited I'm quite nervous as well it's not nailed down yet so it's not flat at all but uh, this is just a test that actually works so here goes Oh, so that was lucky. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, as seeing as it works, I'm going to nail it down as normal. You can see it's quite a sprung piece of track. You do have to bend it ever so slightly to get it into the, uh, the slot. So I'm going to nail that down flat um, the usual way and then uh, continue with the siding. So here goes. So here we are onto the main siding now. Uh, I do obviously need a bit of track. What I've done, uh, believe it or not, when I bought all the track for the main lines on this side of the layout, the, I think I used two boxes worth, I think, and I've actually only got two full lengths untouched left. So I'm gonna be very careful not to waste these and not cut them up willy nilly. So I've gone and dug out all the scrap pieces of track, which I have spare from when I laid the main lines. And I'm just going to see if I can uh, make something of these work. The main line itself is actually on cork, so it is slightly raised, so the point here is uh, just balancing. Um, I want the sidings to be sort of ground level, no cork underneath them. Um, I want to try and get a bit more of an overgrown, underkept look on the run-up to the actual sidings where the point is. So this bit here will be far more used and abused, old. The ballast hasn't been replaced like the main line would. Just to give a bit of scenic interest and maybe a break from this sort of <laughs> more pristine generic look so first things first I need the piece of track which is going to go in there and join to the siding at the uh, point sorry so I'm just going to try and see if I can squeeze this on that one went all right if I can get the other half in Hopefully the ballast isn't in the way from the actual main line itself. Just not, and of course, still leaving a gap in the points for the expansion in the summer. There we are. So hopefully the incline of this bit shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to pack this corner out with some cork bits. Um, so the next job, pack that out, trim this down, join it up to the siding, and then continue it the length of maybe um, a loco and a half for the actual sidings and then uh, I suppose it's the fun of wiring it up. So those two sidings are now laid, they're lightly tacked in and as you can probably hear the Euro Phoenix is ready to go. So here we go with the test. Nice and slowly at first just in case. 
Once it's around this point and this sort of drop, I can't foresee any problems because otherwise it's just normal track, but you never know. Plus the only things that will be going on this uh, siding really will be uh, diesel similar to this one, so um, in effect, it's going to work. In effect you've got the, uh, the heaviest locos you can buy and also uh, the ones with the most traction. So. Problem on this line. Back up a bit. Change the point. As you know, I don't use point motors. There's nothing against point motors, I just, uh, <laughs> I've got different things I'd like to spend my money on. No, I think this one's going to be okay. Yeah, and this is all before it's even wired in properly, you see, as well. Ooh, what are we with the camera? So what I'm going to do, just make sure it goes back up this incline all right. And if it does, I always like to take a pause when I do anything track work wise because I find nothing more infuriating than when you sort your track out, you get it all done, and then you find a trouble spot uh, later on, whether it be uh, wagons derailing, coaches derailing. It could literally be uh, one item of stock you've got which doesn't like um, a point, for example, the one that the Euro Phoenix is in front of or behind as you're looking at it. Um, so, what I like to do. It's just run me train, so I'll take a pause here. I'm going to run the layout as if I'm having a play, get some of my uh, longer trains out, my freight round it, etc., and just make sure they're happy to go over that point and nothing needs adjusting. Once I'm happy with that, I'll then wire it in properly and then get on with the ballasting. So here goes. Mm -hmm. 